Hi, my name is uh, Jens Arnolst. I'm from the University of Copenhagen, and I'm here to talk about uh, my new article in Regulation and Governance called Embedded Flexibilization of Nordic Labor Markets Under Pressure from EU-Induced Dualization. The article is a part of a special issue on grand challenges in the Nordic countries. Uh, and my article focuses on the particular way that the Nordic labor markets are regulated and how that particular way is being challenged by European integration. So in comparative political economy, the Nordics are typically distinguished, stand out a bit, uh, because they haven't experienced the same kind of dualization that other coordinated market economies uh, have. Instead, they have successfully dealt with internationalization through a process of what Kathleen Thielen has called embedded flexibilization, in which uh, institutional flexibility uh, is held in check by strong trade unions. So the, the Nordic labor markets are highly organized. Uh, they're highly regulated uh, via collective agreements uh, and strong trade unions. Um, in the past, this also meant that they were highly centralized types of regulation with the collective bargaining. But since the 80s, there's been a process of decentralization, which have provided companies with more flexibility to, to tackle internationalization and so on. But this flexibilization has been held in check uh, by strong trade unions and by cooperative uh, relations between the social partners, the trade unions and the employers associations. And this implies that today the Nordics are coping relatively well economically with internationalization while maintaining uh, good working wages, uh, working conditions and, uh, and also having low inequality. However, in this paper, I argue that this kind of embedded flexibilization is under pressure uh, from EU-induced dualization. To argue this point, I focus on the governance of posted workers in Denmark and Sweden. Posted workers, they are workers who are employed in one country, but then sent by their employer to work in another country on a specific task. So, what we see in Europe these days is a lot of poster workers coming from the new, relatively new member states of Eastern Europe and being sent to high wage countries like Denmark and Sweden to work for cheap as cheap labor there. Um, and so this causes a dualizing pressure on the Nordic labor market. All of a sudden there is being challenged, channeled cheap labor into these labor market, causing a pressure for dualizing process between natives who have decent wages at working conditions, and then these uh, worker, poster workers who have less favorable conditions. Trade unions have tried hard to counteract this kind of dualization, but regulation from the EU, especially a, a ruling from the European Court of Justice called the Laval ruling, has hampered their ability to do so. And so initially, Denmark and Sweden responded very differently to this ruling and have responded differently uh, to the regulation coming from EU and hampering trade union uh, ability to stop dualization. In Sweden, there's been very conflictual uh, relations between employers and trade unions, so employers sort of went against a, a national compromise to, to prevent or to preserve the, the, the Swedish model. Whereas in Denmark, there was a lot more consensus uh, and, and therefore the, the social partners and government were to some extent able to, to nullify or counteract the, the pressure coming from the EU. However, in this article, I take a long term view and I show that actually there's a process of converging going on, convergence going on, where um, Denmark is gradually becoming more like Sweden. The conflicts between employers and trade unions uh, are arising uh, due to this issue of post of workers, and it's becoming harder and harder for them to find a national compromise to, to prevent uh, this dualization. 
And what this lead me to do in the article is to conclude that basically it is the pressure uh, from, from EU, it's an EU kind of dualization pressure that is coming and not so much a, an issue of only national contentions. So I hope this short talk has encouraged you to read the article and I hope that the article will help stimulate debate about the intersection between comparative political economy and studies of uh, EU integration. Thanks for your attention.